marketing, sales, and service students, welcome back to another brilliant lecture in the series that's going to get us another certificate in the precision exams world, Marketing One. Okay, so we covered chapter seven last time, and now we're gonna dive into chapter nine, and 10 is after this. Chapter nine has to do with market strategy and market planning. Uh, a, lot of mar uh, a lot of this material uh, is in the Marketing One Precision exam, uh, the exam. So we're gonna be covering some really good stuff here. So let's dive in. Once again, I'll be pausing video to have the checkpoint questions answered by you. So I have a record of that so that we have study material going forward. Having said that, let's move forward. Okay, so in chapter nine, as I'm flipping to it in the textbook so I can give you relevant pages, what we're going to cover is four different sections. Section 9.1 is elements of a marketing strategy. Section 9.2 is marketing mix alternatives. Section 9.3 is consumer purchase classifications. And section 9.4 is market marketing planning. Okay. So, 9.1, which starts on page 239, we're going to cover describing how market segments are defined, and number two, identifying the four criteria that an effective target market must meet. So, the term, the vocabulary that you've already gone through in the first Nearpod matching vocabulary with its definition is marketing strategy and the definition is this. It specifies the way an organization plans and coordinates marketing activities to achieve its goals. So the strategy can encompass all sorts of things from promotion to competitive advantage and so forth. So it's, it's an all-encompassing strategy for the entire organization. Uh, so you start with a market and we talked about market segmentation last time. Your market is what the people that you're trying to sell to. So let's say at for our Blue Nation Student Star, our biggest market is students, obviously, but another part of that market, a segment of that market, could be parents or just athletes or so forth. So we have the different segments. You need to recognize differences and similarities in those segments. And segmenting factors are the segments themselves and then behavioral segmentation as well. Uh, so factors used to segment a market. So needs and wants can be uh, one of those. It could be demographics like we went over in chapter seven, um, psychographics and lifestyle, uh, behavioral uh, stuff and geographic um, segmentation is something as well. So this is just kind of a review of what we talked about in chapter seven. Um, so other ones that we could consider is niche marketing. There will be um, some information about niche marketing on page 241 in section 9.1.1. And we get to our first checkpoint question. For 9.1.1, the question is, what does a marketing strategy specify? So I will pause the video now so that you may answer that question. And now moving on. Um, selecting target markets. So a target market is a clearly identified segment of the market to which the company wants to appeal. Number one, the people in the target market have common, important needs. Number two, the people outside the target market have enough differences. Number three, the company has adequate information. Number four, the important wants and needs are understood. So if we were to use our example of the Blue Nation student store again, and let's say our target market was students a, a large segment okay they all have a common and important need as far as bullard gear goes or like the earbuds and stuff like that uh, we wouldn't necessarily market different things uh, for adults that we would for bullard students um, there are definitely enough differences between our target market to the outside so it's for us students the age range is different the culture is different than the adults so that definitely meets that criteria um, our company has definitely has adequate information uh, as far as demographics go and also purchasing um, data as well from however many years we've been using the square app we can actually dive into those numbers too 
And then on the fourth one, the important wants and needs are understood. That's where you come in. You seniors are part of that student body and that's part of your job here in this class in the marketing sales and service class is to be kind of representative of what those wants and needs are of the student body. Okay, so checkpoint question for sections 9.1.2, which starts on page 241 and goes over to page, let's see, goes all the way to page 243. So the question is, what four criteria must be satisfied in order to have an effective target market? We'll pause the video here so that you may answer that question. Okay, moving on to the next. We are on section 9.2 now, and we're going to talk about marketing mix alternatives. So in section 9.2.1, we're going to talk about describing the eight components of the product mix element. Section 9.2.2, discussing important influences on distribution, price, and promotion. And section 9.2.3, we're going to analyze the four stages of a product life cycle. Okay, so fine-tuning the product mix element. So you have a basic product. You have product features of that basic product. Then you have options of that basic product and associated services that might be with that basic product. A couple of definitions and uh, terms that you may have already looked at. So brand and image. So the definition of brand, a name, symbol, or design that identifies a product, service, or company. And then image is a unique, memorable, quality of a brand. Okay, guarantee versus warranty. So the definition of guarantee is a general promise or assurance of quality. The definition of warranty, a specific written statement of the seller's responsibilities related to the guarantee. Um, and then you've got packaging that's involved with guarantee and warranties and then also uses of the product that might break those guarantees and warranties. Okay, checkpoint question number two that covers is covered in section 9.2.1, which is pages 244, 245, 246, and parts of 247. The question is name the eight components of the product mix elements. I will pause this video now so you may answer that question. Okay, moving on. Now Distribution, price, and promotion is talked about in section 9.2.2, so reading and having your textbook available is going to be critical for this section. So that's page 247 and 248 and parts of 249. And the checkpoint question, which again, you will need your, your textbook to get that information. The question is this, in addition to the product or service being offered, what other elements must marketers consider in developing a marketing mix? We'll pause the video now so that you may find this information and answer the question within this video. Okay, moving on to section 9.2.3. And we're talking about analyzing the product life cycle itself. So what is a product life cycle? It's this, it identifies the stages a product goes through from the time it enters the market until, until it is no longer sold. In fact, just recently I read an article, I think it was today, that um, Apple is finally going to stop manufacturing the iPod Touch. Why? Well, because you got your iPhone, and that's basically an iPhone without phone services. So the product life cy cycle of the iPod is coming to an end as far as manufacturing is concerned. Okay, so you've got introduction, growth, maturity, and decline, and all of those are tied to um, sales and profits. Um, and so some products will have a longer uh, product life cycle, and some will have a very, very short product life cycle, depending on the sales and profits that are associated with it. Um, so analyzing further what the product life cycle does, so um, in the introduction phase, you've got early adopters that might go after a product. I, for the most part, I'm one of those guys that like if there's something new and, and I'm, I'm especially when it's technology based, I'm willing to like buy something if it's reasonably priced and kind of work out the bugs with it and see what it's all about. And then you've got your growth phase, you've got your maturity phase where you can reposition and maybe tinker around with the product that you have to make it better. And then you've got the decline phase. And again, this is all talked about in section 9.2.3, which is page 249. 
250, 251, and 252. So the checkpoint question for that section, 9.2.3, is this. What are the four stages of a product life cycle? Pretty easy question, and we just went over the four. I will pause now so you can answer that question. And now we're moving on to section 9.3, and what we'll cover in this is the consumer purchase classification. So in 9.3.1, uh, we're gonna describe the four consumer purchase classifications, and in 9.3.2, we're gonna explain how the purchase classifications affect market marketing planning. Okay, so how consumers shop, and this is talked about in 9.3.1. And that's pages 253, 254, 255, and part of 256. So consumer purchase classifications are based on importance of purchase to the consumer and willingness of a consumer to shop and compare products before purchasing. Um, some definitions of different types of goods. So convenience goods, and this is how consumers shop, so convenience goods. Definition of a staple good is a product that, that are regular, routine purchases. So, for anybody who drives a car, gas is a staple good. Impulse goods are items purchased on the spur of the moment without advanced planning. So, if you're in the grocery store and you see that Snickers bar and you purchase it while you're in line, that's an impulse good. Uh, emergency goods definition is a product or service purchased as a result of an urgent need. So, that could be, let's say there's flooding and you go get yourself sandbags or you get a generator because your power went out that's an emergency good uh, shopping goods are major consumer purchases that are typically more expensive than convenience goods so you can divide this into two different types so you have attribute based goods definition for that is products in which a variety of differences exist and the consumer considers a number of factors to determine the best values so uh, I would say that a cell phone would fall within that um, definition and attribute based goods because um, a lot of phones have different attributes. And then you have price based goods and those are products that consumers believe are similar but has significant price differences. So um, I, I would not classify cell phones in that so much. Um, price based goods where they're similar but have different price, significant price differences. All right. Another uh, term, specialty goods, is a product that has that has a strong brand loyalty. So think maybe REI or think uh, Nike. So that could be a specialty good. And then unsought goods are products that consumers don't know about or don't think of buying, which is rare. All right, so for section 9.3.1, Pages that we're talking about for 9.3.1 are 253, 254, 255, and 256 again. And the question is, what are the four consumer purchase classifications? I will pause the video so that you may answer that now. And moving on. So using purchase classifications in marketing, um, we went over convenience goods and shopping goods and specialty goods and unsought goods. So those are those classifications. And in section 9.3.2, which is page 256, 257, and parts of 258, you can answer this next checkpoint question, which is this. For which consumer purchase classification is product location generally most important? So of, of, the, of those four, what is the one where product location is generally most important? I will pause this video so you may... Reference those pages in the textbook and get that correct answer. Moving on to the last section, we have 9.4 where we're talking about marketing, marketing planning. And so in 9.4.1, we're going to define the marketing plan. In 9.4.2, we're going to describe the market analysis section of a market plan. In 9.4.3, we're going to explain how a marketing strategy is developed. And then in 9.4.4, we're going to explain the purpose of an action plan. So what is a marketing plan? Definition, a clear written description of the marketing strategies of a business and the way the business will operate to accomplish each strategy. So 9.4.1 is pages 259 and 260. So here's kind of an outline of a marketing plan. So you have a marketing analysis, you talk about your purpose and mission, you talk about current markets and strategies, you have your SWOT analysis, your primary competitors. 
Um, and then you have your market strategies. So you have goals and expectations. You talk about your target markets, the unique characteristics of those. You talk about the marketing mix of so product service, distribution, pricing, and promotion. Um, you're going to talk about your positioning statement, and then you have an action plan. So you're going to talk about your activity schedule, which is responsibility, schedules, and budgets, and so forth. And lastly, you'll evaluate all of this in your marketing plan. So you'll get evidence of success and failures, and uh, you'll outline what your method of collecting evidence is. Okay, so checkpoint for 9.4.1 for those pages 259 and 260. What is a marketing plan? So we're just looking for a definition and maybe some details about what is um, contained within the marketing plan. I will pause now so that you can get that answer. Moving on. So developing the marketing analysis. So a market analysis is this. It's, it provides information to help develop a marketing strategy that is competitive, meets customer needs, and can be implemented effectively. So three very distinctive things that make up a successful market analysis. Um, so a company mission statement is part of that. So definition of mission statement is this. It identifies the nature of the business or the reasons the business exists. And it's not just to collect money. There are mission statements that involve lots of different things which are talked about in detail in sections 9.4.2 which are on pages 261, 262, 263 and parts of 264. So when we're developing the marketing analysis we talk about current markets and strategies in the business world as it pertains to that time and then we also are talking about primary competitors. Um, definition of SWOT analysis, so it identifies the business's strengths and weaknesses and the opportunities and the threats it faces, so the S obviously stands for strengths, W is weaknesses, O is opportunities and threats is the T. So you're talking about internal analysis and external environment um, with that analysis. Okay, so checkpoint for 9.4.2. The question is, what is the purpose of the SWOT analysis portion of the market analysis? So again, that can be found on pages 261, 262, 263, 264. I will pause so that you can get that question answered. And moving on. Developing the marketing strategy, so you're determining the goals and outcomes, you're defining the target market, you're specifying the marketing mix, and developing a positioning statement. So the definition of positioning statement is this, a specific description of the unique qualities of the marketing mix that make it different from the competition and satisfying to the target market. So, checkpoint for 9.4.3, which is pages 264 and 265. And the question is, what are the four steps in developing a marketing strategy? I'm going to pause the video now so that you may find that information in the preceding pages. And moving on to the last section, 9.4.4. So we're talking about developing the action plan. Definition of action plan. The final section of a marketing plan, it identifies actions needed to accomplish and evaluate the marketing strategy. So that includes an activity schedule and evaluation procedures. This can all be, the information about all of this can be found on pages 266 and 267. And the checkpoint question for that section is this, why does a marketing plan need an action plan? Okay, so I'll pause now so that you can find that information on those pages, which again is 266 and 267. And that is it, that is chapter nine. So make sure that you have access to your textbook and or the slide deck when you're answering those questions during this video and your answers will be recorded for me. And I will see you again in the next tutorial for chapter 10.